Windows Weekly 126 is coming up. It's one week till Windows 7 ships, and Paul's ready to party. Danger, sidekick owners, danger, and the case for AAC. Stand by. Windows Weekly is coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, episode 126 for October 16th, 2009. Danger, Paul! Danger! Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. For your free audiobook and a whole lot more, visit audiblepodcasts.com slash windows. And by Go to My PC. Unchain yourself from your office PC and access it anywhere with Go to My PC. For your free 30-day trial, visit go to mypc.com slash windows. And by Astaro Corporation, makers of the Astaro Security Gateway, the best unified threat management device in the market. Call 877 the number 4 Astaro to schedule a free trial in your business. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yay! The show that talks about all things Microsoft with Mr. Pauly Therott. A man we haven't seen in two whole weeks. In fact, it's the, since the last time we saw Paul, he's been to Amsterdam and back. Hey, Paul. Hey, and you've been to Dubai and back. Yes. We've been to hell and back, you and I. <laughs> That's so, true. So did they... Did, I'm, not, I'm not clear. You went to Holland for a Windows 7 launch. Right. But they're not launching it till next week. One week from today. <laughs> That's true. So what what did they do with this Windows 7? Well, they're doing separate business launches around uh, the world. And uh, Steve Ballmer was in Europe. He went to you know Munich and Paris and uh, I'm sure London, some other places. And the Netherlands version of the launch was in The Hague. Ooh. Which was uh, very was pretty. Fun? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah, I had a great time, actually. It was good. Well, cool. Yeah. And nice. uh, so now uh, all is well. Well, <laughs> in what all sense? All is well. You are back. <laughs> yeah, I'm back fold. with a cold. Oh, you got a you got I'm the, very happy about it. Oh, you got in the fact, Amsterdam I'm so, cold. You know how you get your eyes get tired and you kind of just want to go to bed. Yeah, I know that feeling. That's kind of where I'm at right what now. What you got right now going down? You know, <clears throat> I've got uh, several weeks of travel lined up here. You know, go away for a week and then I'm home for a week and then go to New York for a week and then I'm home for a week and I go to oh, that's awful. Seattle for a week and then I'm home for a week and then I go to Los Angeles for a week. So, Well, it's only fair that you'd be sick as a dog during all of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, but if I have to get be sick, uh, you know, it makes it's it's best to be sick when I'm home, really. And it's best, you know, I, I got sick kind of on the way home, I guess. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know. But how was your flight? You must have had a... You yeah, had a 15 hours. Bigger. 15, 15 hours, 15. but that was yeah. fun. I had yeah. a blast. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good time. Now, you spoke at a uh, the TED it conference. Was a, is... Not the TED. It was an A TED conference. Hey, sorry. There sorry. is a distinction. It was oh. a TED conference. It was TEDx, which is a franchised TED. Yeah. It's like uh, Davos West. Well, you know, the originally, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like yeah, Davos, New Jersey, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> Davos, Trenton. Yeah, uh, it originally, I think the idea of TEDx was that people would get together in a room and watch TED videos, because they have, <laughs> they have Chris Anderson, the guy who runs TED, uh, the, the big, the big TED, and yeah. he comes on and they have a video of him and saying, "Well, you're going to all be watching some great videos now." And so wow. that was kind of, but this but the organizers uh, Giorgio Ogagna uh, and uh, and and company did a basically did the same thing as a TED it was a full day conference with speakers mm -hmm. doing 18 minutes actually some 1 minute 2 minutes 5 minutes 18 minutes and uh, and there was it was inspirational speakers was artists and it was really great and wow. I I have a, a whole new appreciation of uh of um the Middle East. Now, people, when I say that, say, yeah, but Dubai is not the Middle East. True. Dubai is unique in uh, the well, Middle East. Well, right. So I, was, I, I didn't mean to be ignorant, but is Dubai an Arab nation? It is. It's the United Arab Emirates. So is there 
Are there Arabs? Alcohol there? And no, yes, there's no, alcohol sorry. because Dubai, I would say, is very progressive. The the uh, the sheikh uh, who runs Dubai, Dubai is one of seven emirates in the UAE, mm -hmm. and each has its own sheikh. I guess effectively king, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there's Abu Dhabi, which is very well known. There's uh, yeah. there's Dubai, and there's others, which uh, you I don't I didn't recognize the names of, and I can't remember them. But uh, and I apologize to those of you who live in those Emirates. But uh, basically, it was the desert. The, these were, are all on the Saudi Peninsula, right? Yes, that's right. It's on the Gulf. Qatar and uh, Qatar's there. Uh, Iran. It's all it's all in yeah. there, right? Okay. And uh, so it's in that it's in that group. And then there's some countries there that are more conservative and follow Sharia law and all that. And some of them are less conservative. And Dubai is really quite progressive. They, you know, the the the, the current sheikh and his father, I am told, realized that you know the oil money is going to run out at some point. We need to have an economy that's based on more than oil. So unlike some of these other countries, uh, the the ruling uh, the rulers invested in at building an economy there. Dubai yeah. was always kind of a hub, you know. It's kind of uh, very centrally positioned, so uh, it, it makes a, an excellent business hub. People, I, uh, you know, painted it as the Vegas of the desert, which is not. You know, I mean, they get a lot of attention for having a giant malls with ski slopes and you know, yeah, yeah, building yeah. islands in the shape of palm trees. And what and stays in Dubai, or what happens yeah, in Dubai, it's not, stays. Yeah, it's not like that. In fact, it's very not much not Vegas because there's no gambling, there's no ver there's no entertainment at least right now, unless you like water parks. <laughs> um, it's it's really a business, and it's go go business. I mean, they're building. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, however, at this conference, uh, people came from all over the Arab world. So I met people from everywhere: Kuwait mm -hmm. and, and uh, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and Lebanon and Qatar and everywhere. And so I got a. I think from this conference, I got a real sense of the Arab world, and what and it was really eye opening for me because, you know, I mean, here in America, uh, for better or for worse, we paint the Arab world as as you know they're the new russians right the, 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 right, right. The new i hadn't noticed that they're the bad guys they're the yeah. bad guys in all the movies right <laughs> like they, one of the speakers yeah. was a was an arab who uh, works in hollywood he's a bedouin and he says you know i'm always cast as a bad guy and i really want to kind of nice. raise our raise our uh, reputation yeah. um and uh and so but i tell you i went these uh, warm wonderful people who want who are very peaceful who say this isn't you know there are extremists in both countries this is not who we are this is not who you are and uh, I really, I just dug it. I really, uh, really got excited by it. And what my message was, you know, when I went there to talk to him is, uh, we need to hear from you. You know, one of the great things about new media now is everybody has a voice. And boy, it's important, especially that uh, in the, from the Arab world, that we hear from you, especially from women in the Arab world. Mm -hmm. We need to hear your voices. Uh, this is your opportunity to podcast, to blog, to, to even to Twitter, just so that we get a sense of you, because that's the best thing in the world for understanding and peace. That's how we get there. Are you saying that by communicating, we could actually understand other people? I know it's shocking. <laughs> I know. No, it, it was. It's a hard sell in some quarters. In some corners, yeah. but not in this quarter, boy. They just, they're so, it was yeah. wonderful. So I had a great experience. It was not what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't the Vegas of the desert. It was, sure. it was more like, frankly, Beijing or Hong Kong, where it's just really bustling and, and growing. And, you know, there's 300,000 Emirati there in, in Dubai. There's 6 million expats, Swedes and Danes and Dutch and um, Americans and Brits, a lot of Brits. And so it's really a, a very cosmopolitan city. And yes, there's alcohol in all the hotels and stuff. There are more conservative quarters. Um, but it, but it, that, though, none of that really was what was important to me. I was just really, it was a wonderful, fun time. And a long darn flight, but Emirates is a. If yeah, you're yeah. gonna go, it's a nice How way to go. How long were you there? Uh, I was there five days. It takes a day to fifteen hours to fly there, and six. What's hours the uh, What's the time change like there? It must well, be. It's eleven hours. It's the. It's, 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 it's exactly the other side of the Earth. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we flew just south of the North Pole. We did a great circle, st okay. straight up through Western Canada, mm -hmm. uh, uh, across the North Pole, and then down. So you actually flew across Russia and. Uh, yeah, down through Russia. Yeah. Huh. Isn't that wild? Yeah, when you crazy. look at the map, uh, it's really a funny. It looks like a. U. So the world really is round, is what you're yeah, saying. You know, this was my sh my kind of revelation. Because <laughs> you always think about going left, right. You know. Or yeah, east, well, right. that's what I was wondering. Do we fly east or west? Because it's almost equidistant. No, you fly yeah. north. Interesting. <laughs> just north and slightly east. Anyway, I yeah. I, I yeah. just uh, I I I couldn't have had a better time. Now tell me yeah. about your travels. You were in Holland. You did you did, yeah. did Steve yeah. Ballmer sweat on you? <laughs> he spit on me a little bit. Did he really? Uh, no, he was, 
no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, it's not like I hung with him or anything. I mean, no. Well, um, I, he should have. No, he was funny. You know, we, there was a lot of traffic getting into the Hague, and uh, we had left early, and we were thinking, this guy's never going to get here. And sure enough, uh, they ran into traffic. So I guess what they did was uh, they bombed down the breakdown lane with their flashes. Oh, my God. Going, and they figured, well, if they get pulled over, those. Don't you know, you know who I am? It, it's look, it's, it's the guy from Microsoft. You know? I'm Steve Ballmer. He's good. Developers, developer. Look at you. Look at just look. See if you know me. Developers, developers, <laughs> yeah, developers. Yeah, yeah. You know oh, me. Let now? me sweat for a second. <laughs> go, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You. That guy. You're, You're the monkey. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I spoke at the launch event uh, with the guy Danny. Uh, Did you talk about maybe having a understanding between the Mac world and the PC world, kind of joining? No, I didn't together? do that. No. Okay. There was none of that. <laughs> Did you go? In fact, those I, Mac bigots. It's I, we, we, I, I wasn't um, particularly complimentary to you the Mac. Saw what, uh, you saw what you saw. What Walt Mossberg said. Yeah, well, Windows Seven is um, is so good, honestly, that it would be inconceivable for him to say anything else. I mean, so I, you know, I, I'd love to give him a, a big clap on the back, but I mean, honestly, you know, what are you going to say? I mean. He said, uh, Apple better watch out. Yeah. Well, but, you yeah, know, that's absolutely. happened before. Uh, in fact, I remember talking to Steve Jobs back in when he was um, out of Apple. He was at uh, yeah. at uh, Pixar and would talk to me because mm -hmm. he doesn't now. But uh, he said, you know, uh, we had Apple had a huge lead in 1984 when we came out with the first GUI computer yep. and everything. And and we coasted for 10 years. And by yeah. Windows 3.0, Microsoft had caught up and our advantage was gone. And I think you well, could safe, I, would, I think you could safely say that Windows Seven is has you know is, is, is doing it again. It's, yeah, it's doing yeah. it again. It's it, Microsoft has reached. Parity. I would say it was Windows ninety five where they caught up. But um, I agree. I agree. I think Windows ninety five was the but, big one. Yeah. Okay. But three O even. I mean, remember one Windows one was not so hot. <laughs> hey, I, I was just. I, I don't remember who I was just telling this to, but. Uh, I was just reminiscing about the early days, and you know, before Windows ninety five, I was uh, I, w I wasn't anti Microsoft, but I I was certainly anti Windows, and uh, to, you know, I had a hard time understanding why anyone would use Windows three. And and at the time, as an Amiga guy, I remember looking at this thing and thinking, this is what people use, really. I mean, you know, I, it just seemed amazing to me, you know, that uh, it was so so pedestrian, you know, compared oh, yeah. to what else was oh, out yeah. there at the time. Oh yeah. Um, you know, Windows 95 caught up in a big way, and I th and that was the version that uh, kind of pulled me in uh, to the Microsoft stuff because, to me, that just made a lot of sense. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, I'm with you. And so do you think, I think and it's it, it's safe to say, in a way, that uh, this is a breakthrough uh, in the same way. This is parody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yes, and I was just thinking about this. I have to write the, the conclusion of my Windows 7 review, and, and, of course, I've been talking about Windows 7 a lot lately, um, you know, on stage at <laughs> different events and uh, and also uh, virtually uh, in webinars. And how do you sum this sort of thing up? You know, every version of Windows that comes down the pike, you can't honestly say uh, this is the best version of Windows so far. And, and they always are, of course, as you would expect. Yeah, I mean, it has, uh, it has to be better. Well, yeah, that's the point. There, right? there are some ex notable exceptions. Well, actually, I, you know, I'm not sure that that's true. I know, I know where you're going with that, but uh, I... Having just been thinking about this, I mean, we would we might look at something like uh, Windows Me in retrospect and yeah, say, eh, yeah. not so good. But yeah. but uh, as I think we've discussed a little bit here on the show, you know, people forget the technologies that debuted in Windows Me, and Windows Me was in its own way uh, a surprisingly important release in the terms of getting technology that we all take for granted now out out to the masses. So yeah, yeah I, I know some people didn't have great experiences with Windows Me, but. Uh, you know, it wasn't a complete disaster. Um, you know, Windows Vista 2, I still, I mean, I, uh, I have no other way of saying this. I still almost feel bad about Windows Vista because Windows Vista is, in fact, a fine OS. In fact, it's such a great OS, it's the basis of Windows 7. But, you know, it just has, a, at this point, just a perception problem, right, that's not going away. Why do I see two of you? Because <laughs> two is better than one. <laughs> Why else would you see The only two thing that me? was weird is they were both doing different things. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. I have the technology. <laughs> For those watching at home, and uh, we, do we do this uh, show live on video, believe it or not. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and you can and do it is uh, compelling, stunning uh, content. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Talking heads. Do you I, want I talking heads? I got talking heads. I fiddle with this microphone for 45 minutes and <laughs> we all kind of drifts off. Well, here, here's the good, here's the exciting news, by the way. And I'm going to announce yeah. this tomorrow. Okay. Actually, today, as you hear the podcast. So we, we, we stream live and we've been just doing live streaming since May of last year. At live.twit.tv. So you could tune in on, on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, which is 11 a.m. Pacific, 1800 UTC. Yes. And watch as Paul and I fump for a round. But we've never, uh, you know, we've never offered downloads. There, You know, some people record them and put them on ODTV.me, yeah. puts it on their website and stuff. But we've never offered, like, high-quality downloads, even though we have them and we make them. But uh, starting uh, Friday, we, we're, we're going to announce this, and I might as well announce it here because you're one of the five shows we're going to launch with. Okay. Um, Windows Weekly, Mac Break Weekly, This Week in Tech, This Week in Fun, and This Week in Google will all be available for download from iTunes uh, starting soon. Wow. And, uh, and not only that, mm -hmm. but we're going to, and this will be the big announcement tomorrow at Blog. Am I going to have to start shaving? And what, yeah. I mean, You're yeah. going to be able to watch it on the Roku box. You'll be yep. able to watch Twit yep. stuff. You'll be able to watch it on... Now, how's your... that going to work? So mm. through... through... <laughs> you you have you put your coy mm. face on. Well, I, I know that today Roku has uh, I don't know what you call them providers, right? Netflix and right. Amazon, Amazon, and Netflix, and Major League Baseball. Baseball. One? Yeah, Major, Major League Baseball. Baseball. So you'll be able to add a fourth icon, which will be a Twit icon. Really? Now, what I'm really hoping for, and this technology is not yet there, but uh, that when you hit the Twit icon, you'll you'll say, "Oh, I want to watch what's on live now," or here's a yeah. here's a list of shows uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could watch. Yeah, so you get both. Strength. Best of both yep. worlds. And uh, it's also going to be available on the Palm Pre. Uh, nice. iPhone nice. and G1 coming. We're working on all, all of this from Mediafly. So you'll be able to put a Twit icon on almost... Uh, uh, my goal is to anywhere. Those Yahoo TV boxes, you know, they're all... I think they're all over the world Hey, um, you must have like Twit stickers and stuff, right? I do. you got to send me some of those. Oh, we'd be glad to. You know? Yeah. Some right here. And this, I'll, I'll this, throw them in my. They're on already. My it's already addressed to Paul Thorat via FedEx. <laughs> Look at well, that. that was that's speedy service. Speedy delivery. So yeah. uh, we'll get that. We'll get those out to you. Yeah. Because okay. they're, they're not. These are the ones that are like white vinyl that uh, they they look like you've got a decal on your on your laptop. You know they're. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. So every so the idea is everywhere you want to be. That's our goal. So uh, watch soon for you know if if you subscribe on the Zoom it'll be on the Zoom or the iTunes. Store. I will have to wear a funny hat. I have a hat rack loaded <laughs> with some, funny hats waiting for this moment. I probably have some, uh, yeah, I don't see them right here, but I'm sure I have some bizarre collection of Windows hats, you know. You know, I've been saving this, but I guess maybe now I can. <laughs> I was. Yeah. I think funny teeth would be good. <laughs> Welcome to Windows Weekly. <laughs> it was, this is. Just this be, is really kind of an advertisement folks, for the audio. Let me just work. say, just be glad you're listening to the audio yeah, yeah. and not watching. <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Yeah, sorry, um, a... So we, 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 and for people watching at home, we've got a new, uh, we've replaced the TriCaster with the next gen, with a high-end VT5. Explain, explain what that means. That's the switcher we use so I can do a double box or lower thirds. Video. And switch videos. cameras. All Yeah. It's for the, it's a, it's basically. It's not the Star Trek tool that has a similar name. No. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, what, 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 I don't even, a tricorder. Tricorder. It is not what Bones uses to see if you're, if you've got uh, dimension fever. It okay. is, it is the, um, it is, a, it's like a camera truck in a box, basically. But we built it. Well, we talked I, about this, the video toaster. Yeah. It's the old video. Well, that's what, this, so the one we're using called. This is what we talked about. This is Kiki, Kiki stock hammer. Yeah. What we're sure. using is now called the VT5. What do you think VT stands for? It's important that I meet Kiki stock hammer, by the way. We'll come to Macworld Expo. Wow. It's important that I not go to <laughs> Macworld Expo. <laughs> so, you would be stoned, but you would meet Kiki. I I'll have to rectify. <laughs> hey, speaking of parties. Yes, sir. The party box came. Yes. Look at that. So let me ask you a question about the party box. Yeah. Uh, I have one, too, of course. And uh, Look, streamers. We, yes. But now they're not... Windows branded streamers. They're just no, in they're Windows not. colors. You know, that's the rain, but it's got Our orange, balloons. green, blue, and 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 uh, what is that? I'm curious Some what puzzle mud. you got though. Do we get different puzzles? Oh yeah, because I got a puzzle too. So my desktop Tur puzzle has a turtle. Yeah, mine does too. Uh, but this is one of the new wallpapers, right? It is. Yeah, we haven't it seen is. these yet, so that's good. The playing cards with a with an odd with a weird picture. So let me see. Yeah. So picture, now that yeah. is, I don't believe, is that's from not a the wall. same one. 
I don't think so, unless it's a close-up of a little bit of that wallpaper. I think that it, I never... it might be. I don't know. It's very um, yellow submarine, you know, Peter Max. It, 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 that's exactly what it looks like, yeah. 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 And then uh, I got like eight napkins. Oh, I, I guess I'm not giant. supposed to have too big of a party. Yes, that's right. That's like, well, you, it, you, after a certain point, the cleanup is your own problem. I think is what they're saying. No, the balloons aren't Windows branded either, are they? No, they're just balloons. Yeah. I could, you know, but this is the point. This is why you get it: the giant Windows <laughs> tablecloth, <laughs> giant rubber Windows. Oh no! Wait a minute! I thought it was a tablecloth. It's not. It's, oh, I did too. It's gimme it, bags. It's, it's, good. it's plastic bags. It's shopping bags. It also, oh, that's terrible. Well, now, there's more of them than there are napkins. One, two, three, four, There should be five. nine, I would imagine. Right? Oh, yeah, because it's just a nine, six, yeah. seven, eight. Well, see, I invited thousands. But I, guess I know. We'll have a wrap. I'm expecting at least three or four people, so. You're going to have one at Mary Jo Foley's place, right? Well, <laughs> we're going to have one at a place called Antarctica, which is a, a bar on the Hudson. You're in, kidding. Oh, you're, in you're, New York. So, you're, yeah, you're it's just, like a, it's interesting. You outclassed me. Uh, well, interesting crowd of people, I think. So, you know, we should have, I know Tom Warren will be there, Ned Bott, and, oh, uh, fun. uh, Ina Freed from CNET will be yeah. there. And I might be missing somebody. Let's see. Uh, uh who Tom knows? Warren. But we should have at least three copies of Windows 7 to give away. We'll have some stickers, uh, notebooks. And so, uh, and, and you just show up at Antarctica or is there an RSVP or? Yeah, no, just show up. Uh, we'll be there around 530. Far out. Because you know, you're going to be in Manhattan for the launch event. Yeah, and it is literally the night of the launch. And we haven't figured out how we're going to do the show next week yet. I think we should do it from Mary Jo's. <laughs> yeah, so I have to think about this. Uh, da, 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 yeah. This is the best part. Look at that. Steve yep, Ballmer yep. autographed Windows 7 Ultimate. Mm -hmm. It's nice. They're already uh, showing up on eBay. Which I yes, think is as You know what? That's low. It's it's I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, I think that's unethical. You apply for yeah. the house party, you got to have the party. You can't sell it on eBay. How, uh, how much are they yeah. getting? Oh, I don't know. No, I wouldn't do this. Now, what is this? It's I ultimate have... edition. It's pretty nice. Well, so the the one in the nice box is probably thirty two bit, ah, and then so that's just sixty four bit. bit if you want that instead. So this is not like the package that you would be getting. No, but it's shaped retail. the same way, right? The, the actual retail packaging is probably about a, you know, an inch thick or whatever. Right. And it we now do we know now that the retail packaging will have both thirty two and sixty four bit in there. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Yeah. So these two discs that I have are basically promotional disc, not for resale. See, it says it right on there. All right, I'm going to put that in here. Put that in with my other disc so I don't lose it because I want to go. There's no reason to install thirty two bit, is there? No, only if you have a netbook, I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Would, you know what I bought, it. or perhaps if you're doing an upgrade, you know, an in place upgrade. I have to call Dell because. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't hold off on buying the Latitude Z. Oh, but it's a good idea Latitude because Z is this the 16 inch? Uh, yeah, the 16 inch, quarter inch thick, 4.6 pounds. And it's no optical drive. Is that? Yeah, it has an optical drive. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, I said people keep saying it doesn't have an optical drive, and I looked at the specs. Yeah, you can even get a blue. You know, there's a 14 Z that doesn't, and maybe that's uh, why. Oh, I got the 16 Z. Okay. But I'm very excited about this beautiful uh, machine, and uh, but it comes with Vista, right? Because I ordered it. You know, yesterday, the day before. However, no, seriously, Leo, one week. No, one well, week. I, yeah, I know, but <laughs> well, actually, did they contact you and say we could do this with seven? But, well, here's the thing: it's not going to be delivered till November seventeenth. Yeah. So I'm going to call Dell and say, well, since you're not delivering it till November seventeenth, can you not put Vista on it and just put a Windows Seven? And I'm pretty sure yeah. that's what they would do, right? I Unless so. this is my yeah. nightmare. This is I woke up this morning at three in the morning, I in a sweat. They're what? going to replace this thing with a new version. <laughs> Well, that too. Oh, now, great. Now I'll wake up tomorrow night. That too. But no more. I was thinking, what if it doesn't work with Windows 7? No. Come on. No, what if there's a driver thing or something? Leo, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> this is not 2006, my oh, friend. Oh, good. You mean it's all going to work? There are no issues here. Oh, there's no issues. Oh, no issues. Good. I'm so excited. In fact, that was the theme I kind of came up with for Windows 7. You know, this is like the new no excuses version. Windows 7, no issues. Yeah, well, we can't promise no issues, but there are no excuses. You know, in the in the past, when companies would look at new versions of Windows, they'd say, eh, you know, we'll wait for Service Pack 1. But, you know, when you think about the low-end stuff, uh, like driver compatibility and software application compatibility, 
you know, this is uh, an R2 release or a Service Pack 3 release from a compatibility standpoint, right? There are no issues. So we're benefiting from all the schmucks that bought Vista. That's a uh, <laughs> kind of a glib way of looking at it. But yeah. That's harsh. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. A little harsh. I would put it more like we're benefiting uh, from over two years of improvements to Windows Vista. That's right, Paul. <laughs> You're absolutely right. If I, if I were to say describe the situation, That's I might perfect. describe it a bit differently. Uh, good. So I should be able... Well, the truth is I've got Windows 7 Ultimate right there. I could just install it myself. But but I, you know, I have so many machines that I want to upgrade, so... Uh, I guess I, you know, I should just, I mean, should, I can, I just call them and say, um, oh, by the way, put Windows 7 It would 7 be so on. much nicer just to have them put it on there. They know? have a deal. I already, I already checked. You just go to uh, dell.com slash Windows 7 SMB. Yeah. And it I'm will, actually, uh, yeah. yeah. And that's, you just say, I give, send me seven and it'll just, and it's for shipping and handling. They send you seven. Also, uh, you know, I had bought a, a Vista PC a while back and uh, it qualifies for the separate through Dell as well. And I'm curious to see, you know, how much time it takes them to get it, what the experience is like, and and all that stuff. Yes, so that's why I did it. So the reason is, as I wanted to have two discs, I want to have a Vista disc and a Windows Seven disc, both licensed for the same computer. I don't have to shred the Windows Vista disc when I get the Seven disc, do I? No, I could keep yeah. it. So I that, I think that's kind of nice. To, that's the best of both worlds because of when I ordered. Right. That's what I was thinking. And I couldn't resist. <laughs> and it was just no impulse control. I was going to say, there, there's well, you, clearly a term for this problem. You, you know what's cool about this thing, though? This It, 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 it has inductance charging. So I And I ordered all the, you know, extra... F I mean, yeah. I spent a lot of money on this. Ridiculous. Yeah. The, yeah. It's got a little stand, and you just put it on the stand, and it charges. It charges just being there, yeah. Just by just being there. And it has... And you thought cell phones gave you cancer, by the way. Oh, I know. Don't ever <laughs> sit on that stand, or your butt will fall Exactly. Off. Why is my butt so warm? <laughs> but, but there, there's more. Yeah, it has okay. UWB, ultra-wideband, built in. Yes. So it has wireless docking. So you get a docking unit that m hooks up to the screen and the keyboard and the mouse and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But it's floating out in space because... Do you do uh, at home or wherever your main computer is, uh, do you do multiple monitors? Have we discussed this? I, can't, I would, but I can't. Can't because of... I don't have an office at home. I have to sit in an armchair. And oh, and I, use a laptop. And, 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 I use a, and I have one of those, you know, table, those boards that goes across yeah, the arms, yeah. and I have the yeah. laptop. That's my office at home. Okay. That's why I bought the Dell, because I can't, I don't, I'm not allowed to have a desktop at home. <laughs> so You're not I'm the, compensating uh, here by having 14 desktops around me, but... And overcompensating, Overcompensating. Perhaps. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you, Ben, I would, uh, I would have... Um, yeah. I, you know, the debate is 224. Wrap around 360 yeah. degree. I would probably have, I loved, my, when I had a 30, I loved my 30. Yeah. But I, but then 224s, there's a certain advantage. Our, our um, CFO has 224s because she's the money, money lady. And she yeah. wants her yeah. spreadsheets to go all, you know, go through her peripheral vision. Wow. 180 degrees of spreadsheets. Literally can see the future. <laughs> she looks left, she sees the past. She looks right, she sees the future. <laughs> Curiously, right here in the middle is the bezel, and I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot yeah. tell what is going on. I only see bezel. But the other sides look okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are, yeah. The future is cloudy. Or black I'm plastic. actually experimenting with it. I, I, I've tried multi-monitor in the past, and I, uh, there are things about it I really don't like. And I don't know if it's just because Windows is not particularly sophisticated, uh, when it comes to this kind of thing or what, but uh, I, you know, Windows Seven, it's okay, and I have two. They're not. I think they're twenty-two inch monitors, but um, I think yeah, that's a good okay. way to go. It's okay. Now we there's a new um, ATI card we talked about on this week in computer hardware that mm -hmm. does uh, like a bunch of monitors, like three. I mean, it does this whole thing. It's really oh. very multi-headish. You know, I'm sorry to get off topic here quickly, but uh, I was just watching a, a pre-recorded uh, podcast you did with uh, Steve Gibson. Yes. And I have so many questions. Oh, is this the bro broken browser model one? Yeah. 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 That was Alex. It was interesting. I, I, talked, was, him, was I, talked, him, I talked him off the ledge a little bit uh, because yeah, I he was basically well, uh, saying you can't use a browser anymore. Right, right, right. And I enjoyed the, you know, if you want a bank, you can't use Windows. That was good. Oh, yeah. Um, well, did you see that, Brian Krebs? I did, I did. Washington yeah. Post. I mean, this guy is one of the best known security guys in the country. He's a really good security Well, security blogger. people tend to be rather extreme, They're right? Paranoid. I mean, yeah. so it's Because they know the danger. 
Yeah. Do you know? Uh, so what is what does Steve Gibson use for a browser? What's his browser? Firefox. He uses Firefox. But for a long time, and I could not convince him to stop using Internet Explorer for a long time. Really? And, and his technique for using Internet Explorer was he set the security mode to high. So yeah. basically nothing works. Right. And then you'd get to a site, and the site doesn't work. And then you say, okay, I trust this site. And then it would give And you would do this on a site-by-site -site basis. Exactly. Wow. Uh, Crazy, huh? But safe. Well, but security guys, no, but security guys are... But safe. They're crazy. Uh, and and uh, so he essentially does the same thing in Firefox using um, a uh, plugin called NoScript that turns off JavaScript. In fact, you'll yeah. you'll you'll want to listen to next week's episode of Security. Oh, Network okay. Because we're because we've got an expert on JavaScript saying how dangerous JavaScript is, and you should never go to a website that uses JavaScript, which is ninety percent of the web, including all of my sites. You know, uh, this is the way my mother views the world right. in real life. Don't you go know, outside; so, you won't get hurt. Exactly. So I my. So, you know what our campaign is? I kind of talked Steve into, into saying, to rephrasing it. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, really, the, the, the way it was kind of left last week is, well, just, you know, it's not safe to use a browser. And, sure. And, and you, as the user, have to do all these things. What would fix this problem, this particular spoofing that he was talking about, is if sites would just use HTTPS all the time. All the time. There's no well, reason what, not to. That's actually what I was wondering about. There was a uh, someone had written in a question you were asking him about, uh, you know, giving out IP addresses at a Wi-Fi hotspot using different, um, you know, numbering schemes and whatnot. And right, was I was thinking to guy. myself, well, why not just use HTTPS all the time? Yeah. Well, maybe but, that's the but solution. But it does require. It does require. You know, it's the truth is it's crazy if you're a banking site or. Any site where people are giving you uh, information. Yeah, yeah. The, that there are banking sites that let you get in without HTTPS. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So, and that solves it, by the way, at least this particular issue. Um, and uh, I know from my, uh, I've got a friend and my dad who are involved with the FDIC in my own prior experience in banking that they're not as smart as you think they should I be. Know. Um, and may I point out that many of us, every time we eat out, give a minimum wage oh, waiter our listen, credit this card. Is my, I, where he disappears uh, into a back room for five minutes. Seven, eight years ago, my dad bought his first computer online. We were, at the, we're on the Dell website, and we're configuring the thing. And I said, okay, now you just need to type in your credit card information. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what do you mean? Type in my credit card whoa. information. That's crazy. I said, Dad, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you, you go out to eat about two, three times a week, right? You don't think anything about handing over your platinum American Express card right. to some guy you've never met. And he disappears with it. And then he thought about that for a second. He's like, all right. <laughs> you know, I said, this is Dell. I yeah. mean, yeah, no, no. you know, come on. I, th I think it's very easy because it's the web and because it's new to get a little bit over paranoid about this. There yeah. certainly are a lot of exploits. I, I don't, I wouldn't go as far as Brian Krebs. You know, he says what he says you should do is never bank with Windows. You should get a, win a Linux yeah. live CD. That, this is a complete non-starter. So that's, that's fascinating. That and then only use that. But, you know, the funniest thing for a Mac user at the bottom, he says, oh, well, yeah. yeah, okay, this would work with a Mac, you, too. But you know. Okay, so another option would, would be just to get a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, but I'm writing this column for Windows users. <laughs> he really, it was a very strange, like, it was almost like he had, the, the editor said, um, Paul, uh, what, what, if, what if somebody's using Mac? Oh, well, yeah, okay, if you're using oh, a Mac. Right. <laughs> oh, do people do that? <laughs> but frankly, somebody... I, I think the same problems accrue. Yeah. Mac or PC. This is not an issue of operating system. Uh, this per these particular ARP spoofs have nothing to do with operating system. They could even yeah. happen to a Linux box. I, I don't know what they have. I, 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 you know, I don't know what causes them or what they're, you know, what the well, reason is. It's a man is, but... in the middle attack, and it's. Uh, but, it, it well, this is like saying, "Hey, listen, uh, you know, a certain number of people die on our roads every year. The solution is not to drive your car." Right. It's kind of. Yes, that would be one way of doing it. That. Yes. You know, I could. Yeah. Okay. Very similar. But I actually have to get somewhere. But you, know? but you wouldn't advocate not wearing seatbelts. No, no, so that's true. So we're just saying, and that's why I think... Common sense. I mean, but the truth sense. is, you know, uh, computer uh, usage, a lot of, I think, 90% of security in many ways is behavior, and uh, it requires just a little bit of common sense. I agree. It is. It's behavioral. Hey, let's take a break. When we come back, the uh, case of the missing Zoom... <laughs> the case of the missing zoom. The missing zoom. I think you've misconstrued the topic. Please continue. <laughs> and Paul's picks of the week and a whole lot more. But first, I want to tell you 
as long as we're talking security about a new sponsor, Paul. Really? Astaro. I'm really happy. This is Astaro was the, I'm pretty sure, our first sponsor on the Twit Network. Way back when on Security Now. And uh, they are, they make the best um, UTM, Unified Threat Management, appliance in the business. Just bar none. Speaking of security. Yeah. Um, the Staro Security Gateway. Uh, if you're a small or medium business and you want to protect your network from spam, from viruses, from hackers, if but more than that, I mean, it's you know, you go, okay, well, it's oh, it's a firewall. No, well, yes, but there's more than that. You also get intrusion protection, content filtering. You get complete VPN, including VPN over SSL, IP, SEC, PT, 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 Including such future standards as PPPPT. There's a lot of P's in there. You get L2TP over IPSEC, PPTP tunneling with SSL VPN. How about that? Pretty good. PTP. PTP. And what else you get? It, this thing is easy to use, high performance. You can, uh, as you grow, you can add gateways, and it, it does kind of uh, a patented form of load balancing with their active active clustering. So you can get up to 10 security gateways. This is fantastic. Grows with you. Um, you get S MIME or open uh, PGP uh, encryption. Th now that's really cool. Uh, just off, right off the top, you can automatically. Behind the scenes, without your uh, users knowing it, encrypt, decrypt, sign. You can define user groups or individual users so that there are different rules for everybody. I mean, this is just a, a, such a slick device. I want you to give it a try. There's also the Astaro Command Center, which gives you a, a, a world map to locate and control gateways no matter where they're located. So if you're administrating a WAN, fantastic stuff. Here's what you do. You... you you call 877, the number 4, A-S-T-A-R-O. That's 1-877-427-8276 in the U.S. If, if they're worldwide, you can, if you're outside the U.S., go to astaro.com, and you get a free demo unit for your business. It is incredible. 877, the number 4, A-S-T-A-R-O. They've been such a great support. We really built Twit with their help. Um, and I'm just thrilled to have them on Windows Weekly. It's a very good match, if you ask me. A Staro nice. security gateway. Yeah, isn't that great? This is. I should get you one. Uh, there. <laughs> well, I'm telling just, you. Just don't give me the rack mounted version. <laughs> oh, it is rack mount. Oh, you don't want. It well, rack no, they have. No, I think they have a smaller. Have a, um, you, you can get the. Um, what I would think of as an appliance. One type. looks like a router. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I have actually. Uh, but what, it's nice because then uh, you don't even think about. You know, running. You don't even have to run any virus software on your desktops because it just it all happens as it's coming in. It's amazing. Right. Astaro. dot com. Thank you for your support, Astaro. So the reason I said missing Zoom is my yes, Zoom sir. is missing. I can't find. Oh my no! no what? I know. What do you mean missing? I'm going to Vegas tonight, and I, I'm going. I'm throwing stuff in the air. I can't find my Zoom HD. Well, it's probably in a drawer somewhere. I put it somewhere, but you know what might have happened? <clears throat> my my kids might have stolen it. You better hope that's what it is. You know, you didn't leave it on a plane or something. Oh, or uh, don't say that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I've done something. I've oh. lost an iPod Touch this year. I know. I and I know I left it on a plane. Oh, God, I hope I didn't leave it on a plane. Yeah, that freaks me out. Well, after losing the Kindle on the last trip, I lost Yikes. the Kindle on, uh, on the trip to China. Lost the Kindle? <laughs> yeah, I left it on the plane, and I, I thought about it. Five minutes later, it was already stolen. You know, like somebody <laughs> just snagged it from the seat back. But... Um, after that, I've been very careful about planes, and I search every seat pocket. So I don't think I left it on a plane. Oh, hmm. God. So you're still using yours, though. Yep. You say yep. you have some misgivings. Well, <clears throat> you know, we've talked about the Zoom. It's a great device and all that stuff. But I think a lot of the discussion around this uh, kind of thing happens in a vacuum in a way. Because, you know, you can, you can hold up this device. You can compare it to a, an iPod Touch, usually. Side by side, you can say it's better at this, it's not as good as this, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, bringing, I, I, I brought uh, the Zoom to Europe. I, I Actually, on the way there, I, I just watched rented movies on it virtually for the whole flight. Um, and I'm quite perfect, taken with right? a lot of it. Yeah. What's that? Perfect. 
it's beautiful, you know. But 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 I I think you have to also be honest about the fact that uh, this device doesn't doesn't exist in a vacuum. You know, you have to consider the whole ecosystem, you know. And unfortunately, when you look at the Zune HD, for all the advances that have been made, and there have been many, you know, and for all of the advantages it has, and there are some uh, over the iPod, iTunes stuff, um, there are some uh, shortcomings that still exist, you know. And most of them are not so, so much technical as they are just a, 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 almost a matter of course. You know, Apple's uh, iTunes store is incredibly vast and huge. And it, it ranges from content, you know, that includes movies and TV shows and music, podcasts, audiobooks, applications, and things like that. And uh, I think that the, w when you look at the iPod and the iPhone, they, Apple, they being Apple, have passed a point, an important point, um, that they are an important platform that you can't ignore. They're, they are the windows of, I would say, digital media and of uh, consumer-oriented smartphones, especially in the United States. Paul, this is so it, moving to hear you finally acknowledge this. That <laughs> I, I would like to, no, I, I, I would I, like I, to I on behalf that, of Kiki Stock Camera, I'd like to invite you to Mac World Expo. This yeah, yeah, where, where I can be, uh, we, my we'd uh, like to assimilation bring you, will be yeah, completed. We'd like to yeah. bring you up on the stage. We'd like to use you as um, an example. Well, uh, don't get too excited because I, I, I don't think the Mac has any place in any of this. Oh. Um, but <laughs> but oh. the... You know, well, by the way, I, you know, not to get off on a tangent, but I mean, as far as the Mac stuff goes, you know, the Mac's fine. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, for all of the advances Apple has made over the years, I mean, it still accounts for a very small percentage of that market. I mean, it's ten, hard to 10 percent across 10 percent. Uh, I wouldn't say across 10 percent. Well, it is but, at 10 uh, percent. It's near 10 percent. It's near 10. OK, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually 8, 8 point something. But, but, but it's getting to be 10 percent. <laughs> Maybe because actually, what we're waiting on is Apple's actual sales figures. So eventually, we'll finally we'll see. Uh, and what of it course, is. I, well, we talked about United this States. last last time. Windows Seven could really change that. Uh, we don't. Uh, we we don't had know. a we have a little you know bet. What? You think it's going to stimulate sales? I don't think so. Or or is it? The oh other no, way I, I, actually, I don't. So it's the other I way don't. around. I think it's going to stimulate sales. You don't think so? See, I already, yeah, I already get, forgot talk, our we'll positions. Talk about that, but let me just we'll get to that. We'll we'll get to the Mac stuff and the the Windows Seven stuff in a minute, but. You know, the thing with the Zune is, it, in many ways, if you think about it, and you might appreciate this comparison, the Zune is, to the MP3 player market, to the digital media market, what the Mac is to Windows, right? The Zune um, is to the digital... Yes, I would agree. It's a minority yeah. player, yes. It is. Well, I don't... Not, not just in that sense. But it is something that I think people like myself who use it and love it feel that is superior. Don't understand why the other thing is so popular. Um can point to the many advantages that we feel that it has, you know. But what's hard to overcome, and I would arguably impossible to overcome, is the ecosystem stuff that occurs on the other side, on the, other side the, the vast ecosystem that occurs on the Apple side. As Apple is discovering with Windows, not discovering, but as Apple is experiencing with Windows, you know, for all of the huge growth that they experience uh, quarter to quarter, they're still not making a huge dent. And... The reason is one because when the other player is so entrenched and so huge, it's it's just a part of people's lives. No one even thinks, no one really actively thinks about not using Windows. No one really cares about that stuff. Not most people. You know, it's not really a concern. And I and I think that's the way it is in the iPod side. You know, um, we can make fun of all the eye uh, the white eye you know uh, earbud wearing zombies and all that stuff. But the truth is. Uh, you know, it's an uh, ecosystem. This, it's, it is a huge ecosystem. And, and I think you're exactly right. And I think that this is one thing that Steve Jobs really showed some uh, prescience and brilliance in. It's yeah. his, it's his, and it comes from his prejudice towards control and, yeah, and controlling sure. it from A to Z. So saying we have the device, we have the content. We have the mm -hmm. delivery mechanism, and we control it all. Now these things all feed on each other. Exactly. You know, exactly. no one piece of it is enough. You know, yep. if if you could look at the uh, the sheer amount of content that they have just for music, right? So Apple has, you may know, how many millions of songs do they have? Do you know? Oh, I th six or seven million. I can't remember the total, okay. but it's a huge. So it's, 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 it might even be more than that. Yeah, it's a full the full uh, set. Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft has six million songs, right? Yeah. Um, if if Microsoft's collection of songs were one, two, three million less than what Apple had. Eh, you know, whatever. They're close enough, right? It doesn't matter. And by the way, it doesn't matter anyway because that music is all compatible across the different devices anyway. It's not that, right? It's it's the, uh, you know, the addition of all this stuff together. 
It's but, it's a synergy. It's a synergy of all this. I agree yeah, with you. Yeah. Now, in fact, I think you can make a very strong case that iTunes and its interface sucks. Oh, by the way, I, God awful. But uh, I hate <laughs> iTunes. Yeah, in many everybody ways. does. Because There's nobody who loves because it because it is so slow. Yeah, and so bulky. And yeah. God help you if you ever have to do something like actually sync a device with it and watch your entire computer slow down. And maybe it's better on the Apple side. I have no idea. You know, if you use no, a Mac, I don't it's know. just as bad. It's it, lousy. It is it not a good, it, but lousy. however, I love I love the Zune software. Love it. Yeah. Right. I could. Well, I would. Argue I love you, uh, the Zune Pass. Right. I'm, these things are all excellent on their own. They're better together. It's all good stuff. But, you know, <laughs> but but hey, I I do things like I went over to Europe, uh, and I'm I'm gonna come home. So I'll rent some more movies from the Zune and put them on my Zune. Well, you know what? I can't because I'm in Europe. Well, you get that. They problem only sell with, this thing in the United States, so yeah, it doesn't work. You kind of get that problem with Apple as well. Well, not really, because actually, I can buy stuff from the Apple Store right. when I'm in France or right. in uh, right. the Netherlands. You know. Do you so, think that now this is okay? Here's the loaded question: Do you think yeah. that this comes from Apple paying more attention to user experience than Microsoft? No, no, no. It comes from having a head start, and it comes from doing the right things at the right time. You know, it comes from uh, improving the product in ways that make sense as you go along. And, but and, but and but they're paying attention. To, they've got a better you, you experience. Isn't that well, because well, they're paying what, attention what, to it? Well, what do you mean by they have a better user experience? Well, you just, I, basically I that's it, what you're saying. They have more stuff. No, but basically that's what you're saying. You're saying as a user, I I, I have a Zune HD. Uh, if the if the user experience on the Zune HD were comparable to that of Apple, it'd be a no brainer. Well, no, okay, so not. I'm not actually. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, you're not. Um, it it. it <laughs> These things are tough because I would love to say uh, as a blanket statement something like I recommend the Zune always and here's why. Right. Um, and I can't say that and that's what bothers me about it. If you are a music lover and you are going to be discovering new music, uh, you can make a compelling case that the combination, some combination of at least two of the following three things makes a lot of sense. The Zune PC software, the Zune Pass, and the Zune device. Because with these things working in tandem, you have... Uh, access to an almost unlimited supply of music uh, on an ongoing basis. It's a phenomenal solution. It, they don't have anything like it on the Apple side. By the way, 10 million songs. I just 10 million songs, yeah. I figured it was millions more than yeah, what Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Almost, so, you know, 50% more. more. More than 50%. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know it was more. Um, but 6 million is good, right? I mean, I don't think... Yeah, you, app, know. you know, to be honest, the iTunes store had 6 million a year ago. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's just it's been yeah, growing. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, and that, that's a case of not better user experience. So, just okay. more time, more, more. Right. Yeah, I feel weird about the Zoom because I was a very, um, a very big supporter of things like Windows Media Center, which I also felt uh, and still do feel in many ways strongly that uh, is something that is superior to the competition, but it has not taken off in any compelling way with the consumers. So, you know, what's the difference? It doesn't matter if something's great if nobody uses it. Um, but I think the, the I think the thing that people uh, and there are people who do love the Zune and I, and they've certainly made a good decision in many ways. Although they have to go into it with their eyes wide open, right? You know, you have a smaller ecosystem to work with. If you want to put one of these things in your car, uh, there isn't going to be uh, too much in the way of Zune specific car solutions, right? I mean, yeah. uh, once you look past the FM uh, baloney that you can connect to your car with, uh, you know, new car stereos have USB connections; those will work fine, obviously. Um, but you know, a touchscreen device isn't necessarily the best way to uh, you know uh, to navigate music while you're driving around in a car either. So it's not perfect, you know. But I think that the future of the Zune platform is uh, not the device. You know, I think that Microsoft is going to make this their overall entertainment brand. I think we're going to see it in Windows and Windows Mobile. I know we're going to see it on the Xbox. And and I, the way I described this in writing was that. In the, I think before the Zune HD, if you looked at the Zune platform and you, and you thought of it sort of conceptually, you could look at it as a pyramid where the Zune device would be on the top and then these other things would come down into the pyramid underneath it. And today's Zune platform, that's not, that's not it at all. It's a giant puzzle. And the Zune HD is just one of those pieces of the puzzle. And you don't really even have to have the device uh, to get a, a really good Zune experience, such as that is. Um, you know, because you can use it on your PC. You can use it out on your TV. You can blast it out to your Xbox. Um, you could subscribe to Zune Pass and listen to it through the web on your Mac, you know, at work or whatever. Um, I think they're just pushing it into different areas, and I think that makes a lot of sense. But, um, you know, if you're looking for something that competes uh, directly with the iPod, uh, certainly uh, on a, 
on a tech spec basis, feature by feature, you can make some interesting cases there. But when you look at the big picture, which I think is the important thing for people, you know, I can't, I mean, I, I, I can't recommend it to normal people, you know? Right. I mean, I can recommend it to people who understand exactly what they're getting into. Right. But those are, you know, there aren't many people like that. And it's, I feel it's bad. It's the mom test. It's a mom test. Yeah. Really I would never feel comfortable saying, yeah, this is the one you should get. Yeah. You know, and and th it's Boy, funny because I'm not because... sure I'd say that. I, I, okay, now see, I I am in the position of of having uh, that recommendation because I do the radio show, and so yeah. I always consider the radio show when I talk to normal people. Right. You know, admittedly, a lot of yeah. Our, yeah. our listeners listen and enthusiasts, and I figure, well, they know what you know. They they can hear us talk about this on all the other shows. But when I'm talking on the radio, I'm talking to the normal people, yeah, the non enthusiast. And uh, I recommend the Zoom, but I, but, I, but I have to have a conversation with them. And yes, the conversation well, goes, you know, along these lines. Do you want the most availability or are you interested in the Zoom? Do you like the idea of a subscription model? You mm -hmm. know, how are you going to be using subscription, this? Subscription, if that's a big deal for people, that's, you know, no, Then it's a clear choice. There's no other way to go. But on the flip side, if you have any interest at all in those apps, you can't even look at the Th Zoom. And that's exactly the dichotomy I draw. Yeah. I say, do you want apps? But I, yeah, I, by the way, take it a step further. You know, Apple has a variety of different device types. So you might say to a, to a normal person, to any person, well, where, where would you use this thing, right? Well, I want to use it at the gym. You know, a touchscreen device when you're moving on, uh, on an elliptical trainer or something not is good. not necessarily great. Not good. And by the way, if you're jogging down the street, it's absolutely worthless if you need to change what's playing. Uh, there, there were no controls on a on a on a cord like there are on the on the iPod side or device types that just have buttons on them that you can press. Well, what do you use in the gym? Do you use the shuffle or a, a nano or what do you use in the gym? So I actually typically, well, typically I use an ultra mobile PC and I watch a video. But if I'm going to really? listen to music, yeah, I'll queue up a playlist. I make playlists for the gym. Um, actually, you know, I I do have a Zoom Pass and I use the Zoom at the gym and they actually have. Uh, channels and some of the channels are oriented around aerobics and working out and that kind of stuff. And I've been kind of playing with that stuff just to see what the songs are like. And, um, you know, it, it's fine if you're not going to touch it. You know, in other words, uh, okay, cue up what you're going to play and then just go do what you're going to do, you know. But I'm, I kind of fiddle, you know, I don't, different people work different ways, you know. Uh, I, I tend to, ah, I don't want to hear this song. Oh, no, I want to hear that, you know. Uh, I tend to want to play with it. And, you know, touchscreen, it's not great for that. On the flip side, of course, the Zune has an FM radio. And uh, that's great for a gym because a lot of times in gyms, the TV is, uh, the volume, you know, the audio uh, portion of a TV show is set to an FM radio channel. And you can tune into that on a Zune. Now, on the iPod side, I think you can only do that on the, on the Nano, right? Oh, that's interesting, it. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, there's a lot to consider. Well, if you want FM radio, you know, my I have a, one of the gyms I go to, the television audio is on an FM radio. Zoom. Yeah. Zoom is right. in. Exactly, exactly. So the Zoom works fine. Yeah. I guess the new uh, channel you could use. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't you know. tend to, it's it's easy to get excited about things. But again, in a vacuum, uh, the Zoom HD, is a, it's a wonderful device. I love it, you know. Yeah. And I think you can make great cases for it in different scenarios. But... Um, there's such a huge ecosystem to overcome, and it's never going to be overcome, right? Um, just like I don't think the Windows ecosystem is never really going to be overcome, because what will happen eventually is we'll just move on to the next thing. Which is cloud, I think. Cloud stuff, exactly. Yeah. Web applications and so forth. And, you know, and then the underlying um, platform becomes a little less important, especially when they overcome things like, well, how do we manage digital media? How do we... Uh, you know, do some of the things that today require, you know, rich applications on the client. Speaking of the cloud, we got a little a rainstorm. <laughs> For those of you. A, a literal you, rainstorm? A, a, well, maybe a little thunder, a little lightning. but And finally, some clearing skies in the cloud coming up in just a little bit. I'm talking about Sidekick. Danger! <laughs> Danger, Will Robinson! <laughs> I know. The headlines write themselves. They do, don't they? But before we do that, I do want to mention my friends that go to my PC. The Citrix folks, they do that great product that you know and love, and I know and love, called Go to My PC. It's the best remote access software out there anywhere. And I'm going to give you a chance to do it absolutely free. In fact, you know, while I'm talking, you can install it. It's really easy to do. 
it's one of those things where you don't even have to. It's kind of a no-brainer. You don't have to go in and configure the firewall, or ch you don't have to change any settings. Just go to go to mypc.com slash windows right now. G o t o m y p c dot com slash windows, and uh, you can try it free for a month, unlimited use. If you feel chained to your office computer, or you're one of those people who, when you get up and you're ready to go home, you 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 bring out the USB key or the CD, the burn or heaven forfend the external hard drive or your laptop and you sync it up remember lap link paul remember those i the, do yep. you know you get the printer cable and you connect them together and you sync it up just so you could take it with you now you don't i don't even think about it i walk away from the computer when i need something for my office computer there's no problem i just go to go to my pc.com i enter my secure username and password i instantly have a 128 bit ssl encrypted connection right to my office computer it's essentially a vpn but you don't need the IT department. You don't need any special rules or codes or keys or anything. And it, it does NAT traversal. You don't. Need, you can even do it at an internet cafe where there's no software installed. You just go to the website, you log in, and boom, there's your office computer. You send and receive email, run any program, access any network resource. It is so slick. And it's yours free for 30 days right now. Before you go on the next trip, before you go on vacation, maybe you just want to go home early and spend some time with the kids. Go to mypc.com slash windows. You'll have it installed in seconds, and you will love it. Or my name is not Paul Harvey. Good day. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was channeling there. I don't know. Page two. Let's talk about the danger of using the cloud. So this actually has well, a happy well, ending. I, this has a happy yeah, ending. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. But, boy, it didn't look like it for a while. You know, I, I, I maybe it's just because of, what I do for a living, but I have a pet peeve with the way people latch on to things when it comes to tech reporting, you know? So every time there's a Gmail outage, and I mean all two of the times that it's yeah, ever happened. Yeah, I know what um, you're talking about. There is some huge, oh my God, oh my the God. Cloud, you know, it's the cloud's not going to work. How I'm can told. you trust your business? Oh my Seriously. God. <laughs> Seriously. And, and, you know. I, well, the now, one what, thing now I, admit this though. If you are a yeah. Sidekick user, yep. the, the, and by the way, this is why I stopped using the Sidekick. Um, okay. you, you there's there, it's kind of a closed system, right? So, but, but let's back up a second. So okay. you, you have to just so people understand, uh, the the sidekick was created by a company called Danger that Microsoft acquired right a year ago. Right. I I haven't used so it in the Microsoft. This era. is a legacy system. This is this is sort of like uh, people. Say, you know, a few years back they could like oh you know. Uh, oh, did you know that Hotmail runs on FreeBSD or whatever it was? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Microsoft bought Hotmail. Yeah, it ran on yeah, whatever yeah. it ran on. You know, I, yeah, yeah. I, no, no, I, no, no, no. I, I like the Sidekick. In fact, in my opinion, the Sidekick had a chance to be the iPhone. We gave the Danger, yeah. the original Danger Sidekick, the best the of CEO, CES award at, at Tech TV in 2005, probably. Or sure. No, maybe well, it no, was the 2003. first thing that people were, you know, they would text on it. It was awesome. And you flip first it up, one, it looked yeah. like a tricorder. It was yeah. And yep. I loved it, except that I didn't like it. It was a completely closed system. It didn't, uh, you couldn't you know what's amazing to, to me, your... too, is they've done nothing with this, right, right, at Microsoft, from what you can tell. It's crazy. Well, all the danger guys left to go yeah. to Apple to work on the iPhone. Yeah. So it I don't really, know what's going on with this thing. It was a precursor. And this is why I have some sympathy for people who thought they lost all their data. Because yes. you you don't, you aren't copying it. to. You can't copy. As far as I remember, you couldn't copy it to any other device. You lived in the T-Mobile universe. It's designed universe. to be, yeah. Well, it's on the device, too, right? I mean, uh, the, the, the important thing to understand here is we don't know how many people could have lost data or did lo lose data. It's not. There are one million people with this kind of device. Oh, no, but it's automatic sync. So if, uh, if well, there's thought, servers... No, no, I thought the only way to lose it would have been... Literally, if you if you uh, pulled the battery out oh, or okay. let the battery die, I see. Okay, and then you had to resync with what was up in the cloud. I got it. Okay. it was lost, so it didn't erase data that was on your hard. Oh no 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 oh, okay. no no. Okay, because no. because that's I, it. Really made me nervous. Yeah even yeah no back no. Then no. because you no as you long could, as you kept the thing charged up. Okay, and you never tried to manually reset. Then you'd be fine. It, you'd be fine. So by the way, this could have affected seventeen people. We don't even know. It, it may it may have been a complete non-event, but. I think what makes it mon monumental, of course, is a, a it's my it is Microsoft. I mean, uh, they didn't develop this technology, but they do own it. And of course, you know, last weekend they came out and they said, "Well, yeah, we're not going to be able to get it back." <laughs> you know, like they uh, they came out with this really awful statement where they just said, it, "Almost certainly, we're never going to get any of this data back." That was a mistake, as it turned out. They shouldn't have said. Yeah, that. and it, the the picture has gotten progressively better as we go day, day to day. 
you know, on Monday, I think they came out and said, you know, actually, we're going to we're probably going to be able to get some of this back. And then I think as of today, they've pretty much said, you know, we're going to um, we're almost certainly going to get all of it back. So Dr. Mom, is, Dr. Mom in our chat room, who I guess I gather is a psychic user, said, OK, if you would go into uh, airplane mode, mm -hmm. you would also lose your data. So okay. you didn't have to take the battery out. You could. It would be. It was possible to lose data. Certain now the conditions. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. The good news is, uh, they said almost everybody's going to be okay, right? They're going to make them all whole. I, th I believe so. Yeah. So whoever, whatever nitwit. <laughs> you know, can you imagine? I mean, I, it's like bad uh, impulse just, control. Oh. I'm going to upgrade the servers. Everyone good? Well, yeah, yeah was, go ahead. What could go wrong? <laughs> there was nitwits all along. No backups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever happened, screwed up. Screwed up. Yeah. Then somebody puts out a press but, release saying we've lost all your data. Now that was not so bright. No, no you only no, do no. that when there is absolutely. It was. No it was here when I went home on Friday. I don't. I don't know why it's not here today. And then, well, let's uh, put out a press release. You know, <laughs> so stupid. I, I don't know. So, you know, I think the unfortunate side issue here, though, is people look at this, and of course, you know, tech industry reporters write stories, and this cast a cloud over Microsoft's. Um, you know, goals of doing cloud computing. They compare it somehow to Windows Azure, you know, as if there were any comparison. Uh, it, it, it's just not completely unrelated. You know, it just, um, you know, for better or worse, uh, the the danger stuff that Microsoft has is is essentially a side project in many ways at Microsoft. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not even clear what the point of it is. Um, certainly, you don't see any danger type technologies occurring in Windows Mobile here a year later. So, you know, I don't know. So, uh, the chat room is saying, well, you would have been mad at them if they had not released the press release. No, no. What you do is you don't release a press release saying we've lost all your data until we're you... We're working on it. Yeah, you say... you. <laughs> we are we are working 24-7, yes. and we're going to do as much as we can, and we will update you as soon as we know more. We acknowledge a problem. What did Google do when yep. Gmail was yep. down? They didn't say, oh, it's never coming back. <laughs> Yeah. No, but, it, you know, the Google stuff, it's funny because it was a very similar issue. It was like a, you know, human problem. A cascade you know? of, uh, Somebody yeah. tripped over the cord for the Gmail server that we have right. here. And, this stuff is know, not, this, look it, it's a computer. You yeah. lose data on your computer, you can, you know, I mean, however, because well, of the closed the nature of the so getting data across, yeah. you know, to different servers. But. but because of the data, the closed nature of the, of the sidekick, I, 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 I stopped using it even though I loved the platform. Because I sensed that problem, that T-Mobile had too much responsibility sure. uh, for what I was using. And, uh, you know, you couldn't buy an application that they didn't approve. And they, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> it was a closed environment. Wait a minute. I guess it depends on who makes that environment, doesn't it? Lily? I loved the sidekick, <laughs> and I really wanted to. I think it was it was it had the potential of being an iPhone. It was it was a, almost a flash in the pan thing, but for a very short period of time, all of a sudden, this was like the big. Oh, I loved it. And you know, got to have it gadget thing. When we uh, when we were seeing it for the first time at CES and made it the best of show. Yeah. It when you flipped it open, it did this Star Trek tricorder sound. It went, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they released it, they had to take that out. Paramount said, uh, I don't think so. But that was, to me, that was nerd vanna. I mean, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. So. No, it's understandable. But this is, you know, this is what gadget lust gets us. You know, disappointment. Disappointment after disappointment. What's the latest on, um, <laughs> I almost hate to do this to you, Windows yeah, Mobile uh, 6.5? Speaking of disappointment. Yeah, so did this thing... This it's like thing rubbing have salt in the wound. <laughs> yeah. I, did, did you I get that phone? Did you, did, 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 no, no. no, I didn't actually. But, um, you know, I'm going to have to get a Windows Mobile 6.5 phone. And by the way, I, <laughs> let's compare and contrast that statement with I have to go get a colonoscopy or, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like you have to do it. it You're not looking it's, forward it's not, to it. No. You're hoping it ends well, but... It's not a pleasure. It's not going to be good. Yeah, so two things about Windows Mobile 6.5, I would say. Uh, one is that, you know, I'm always interested when things that Microsoft makes that no one really cares about, like the Zune or Windows Mobile, all of a sudden get a lot of press, right? Yeah. You know, in the weeks building up to the Zune HD release, this was all people could talk about. It was all over uh, the blogosphere. It was the yeah. biggest news in the world, right? And I have to wonder now, weeks later, are any of those people actually using this device, right? Uh, they talked and talked and talked about it. 
and then it kind of came and went. And, you know, Windows Mobile 6.5, uh, they launched uh, in New York while I was away, so I didn't really get to uh, attend the launch or pay as much attention to it as I wanted. But now that I'm back, I'm, I'm looking at what's available, and I have to say, uh, it, this is, it's just disappointing on so many levels. And I would start with such things as, well, surely there must be some huge uh, collection of devices for me to choose from, you know. Uh, no, actually there aren't. There are three. And, uh, you know, one from AT&T, one from Verizon, and one from you know, T-Mobile. And, yes, there will be more over time. But, you know, they all kind of stink. And I, you know, I've been talking about leaving the iPhone behind since, I don't know, February. Uh, I don't – Leo is now walking away for some reason. Uh, <laughs> we were, <laughs> Are we? Should we? Uh, no, no, I'm back. <laughs> I what was it that gave it away? Was it the fact that I, I wandered off? <laughs> I, was it the fact that the? Well, it was that sort of. It kind of gave me the wave as you walked away. <laughs> See, yeah, no. I'm out of here. No, no, I'm trying to. I'm looking at the this Audible ad. Yeah. I'm just trying to find out if I can talk about this new Audible thing or not. But Dane's not here, no. is he? Shoot. Just no, you better. keep talking. I'm going to do a little research. <laughs> I'll keep talking. I don't have that much to say about it. I mean, come on, so tell I'm, us more about HTC <laughs> and uh, the uh, new Windows Mobile 6.5. Is is HTC doing one, or are they all Android now? Oh yeah, no, HTC is at least uh, actually. I think the three that I'm kind of considering are all from HTC. The, but the problem with the HTC stuff, from my perspective, not a problem for most people, but from my perspective, is that they put their own UI on top of it. Yeah, you, and you need to review. I, Version, I, I want to see 6.5. Six yeah. I want to use 6.5. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to go, I'll go to the AT&T store, I'll go to the Verizon store, uh, and I'll kind of check these things out and see if I can, in fact, get to the default Microsoft stuff. But my understanding is that in some cases, they actually replace Microsoft stuff. So uh, that's, you know, not so great for me. Now, for normal people, that's fine. But it doesn't say a lot when you come out with your brand new UI and, you know, the phone, three of the four phones or two of the three phones that are out have all completely replaced the UI. <laughs> You know, with with something new and uh, and improved. So, I don't know. You know, I don't know. So, this is a. Uh, I don't think there is a single instance, and this is going to be a rarity, uh, of anyone providing any positive information about this product. Right? I mean, uh, and I have to think that Microsoft knew that this was going to happen, going in. But you know, it's amazing to me. The reaction that I've read online, the reviews I've seen from people who had devices ahead of time um, are universally negative. And uh, one of the comments that I had made to someone who asked about Windows Mobile 7 recently, which would be the next version coming hopefully next year, but I don't, I don't think we can expect to see that, is that there is no concrete information about the next version of Windows Mobile. So Windows Mobile 7 can be whatever you want it to be, you know. Uh, we can uh, cast our aspirations on this. You know, I would, I would like Windows Mobile Seven to be Windows Seven, shrunk down to fit on a mobile device, in much in the same way that iPhone uh, OS is yeah, Mac OS. Well, okay, but the way they shrunk it down, you would never know it's OS Ten. I mean, that's the problem yeah, I've yeah. always had with Windows Mobile is. Well, you can't, but you can't. Yeah, you don't want it's to. It's got a start button. I, yeah, I it's a desktop want... start button. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's just a mistake. There's, a, there's, a, it's a different yeah. interface. You can't do that. Yep, it's a different kind of device, and. Uh, I don't know. And that's my, you know, I, I, without having seen it, right, in person, I can tell you off the top of my head, one of my big problems with Windows Mobile 6.5 is you don't have to go too far into the UI to find something that was there in Windows Mobile 5 or v earlier versions. You know, it's it's old stuff. You crufty. Know, the, yeah. Junky. Junky. Crufty. So that's something, that's something I'm looking forward to is getting a new phone. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Someday my phone will come. My, my particular deal with the devil coming back to bite yeah. me in the ass. You know. oh, I'm so sorry. They do have. I want an HTC Leo just because it's named after me. I see. And which one? I don't even know what that is. I don't. So. I think it's an Android, but I don't know. Who, who knows? Yeah, the Android stuff looks interesting, and of course HTC's Android phone. Maybe that's the one you're talking well, about. Well, the first. Well, no, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a Hero. Let me see the HTC Leo. Is that? Uh, is that Android yeah, or is that the Hero? Windows but mobile? you know, they it has that same sort of UI that they put on the Windows Mobile. Right. Well, they call it something different, but it's a yeah. Very no, similar. they're all doing that now. No, the yeah. Leo. The Leo is a six point five. The Leo is HTC who's Leo. Yeah. Who sells this? Eight hundred by four eighty display. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, don't you think? Do you want one? Look at that. I don't know. I don't even Look know. Look at that. Who it's, a, it's it's. A, well, I think T-Mobile is going to do it. 
eight hundred. Look at that. That's the one. That's it on that's the line. That's nice. It's nice. Yeah. It's a night or it's big. I guess. And that's Windows Mobile. You see there? See there? It's got that uh, that new uh, yeah, yeah, hexagonal that grid. Unconfigurable. The honeycomb. Yeah, it's nice. Well, anyway, so I'm looking forward. It's gonna have a one gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon. I just mm. like saying that. Four point three inch screen Snapdragon. Snapdragon. It's really almost a touchpad. I mean, it's it's that much bigger. I went into the uh, AT and T store probably in the spring, and I explained to the woman I was working on this book, and I needed to write about it. And she actually said to me, "Look, you know, we have a thirty day return." She said, "You should just write about this and bring it back." <laughs> <laughs> she knows and, you. Uh, she knows you. She it said. was funny, and I, I ended up not needing one from them. Uh, but it was just it was so funny because she had no enthusiasm for these products at all. <laughs> you know, she was just saying, uh, "You know what? You just get an iPhone or a, a BlackBerry." I don't know. 800 by 480 is interesting. I know. I'm telling you. And just because it's named after me, I like it. They knew what I wanted. But that's it. But that. But again, when are we going to see it? No one knows. Nobody knows. Nobody yeah. knows. Nobody's saying. Should have been out by now, but it's not. All right. What about this Motorola Click? Have you seen this? Yeah, same idea. That, that's an Android phone, but that's got that same, you know, uh, glossed over UI. That one, you've got like your tweets floating by and your Facebook right, right. messages. It's very social. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Although, I have to say, one of the things I really like on the iPhone mm -hmm. is push notifications. And a number of apps are starting to use it where, for instance, yeah. i got the CNN app. And it, so I'm sitting here, and my iPhone just pops up. Breaking news from the CNN. The police say that no one was found inside that balloon that was thought to be carrying a six-year-old Colorado boy. Huh. So that's, so that's, uh, that comes across the screen, not yeah. in any clicky, you know, cool way. It's just a, a or, my, or tweets. If somebody DMs me or texts me, that mm -hmm. those pops up. And I kind of like that. I think that's kind of neat. Neato. But anyway, um, I, you know, the click, I think, is more for the little ones. Yeah. The under, under 50 set. You know, the iPhone is an interesting place right now because there are so many apps. Oh, this home everything. screen scheme that they have is getting a little... Oh, it's a clunky. ponderous. I agree. Yeah. I agree. They, uh, you know, they only give you what is it? Nine pages? Ten pages? I've run out. Yeah, it'd be pretty easy to run out at this yeah. point. Wait a minute. They upped it the last one, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it looks like twelve. Still running out. All right, <laughs> let's uh, take a break. We've got a great <laughs> suggestion for um, uh, Paul on his uh, uh, tip of the week. For if you're sh if you're shifting to Windows Seven. If you're shifty. Shifty. Can you believe one week away? I know. So exciting. You can feel the tension in the air. The best version of Windows ever. <laughs> Bar none. Bar none. One week away. Walt Mossberg says, Whoa. He actually said that. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, also, uh, Paul's software pick of the week. Let me see what he said. Now... I know that we're going to get this question, so I'm going to ask you yep. one more time. Okay. <laughs> Clean install. What about it? Upgrade. Oh, we don't know. Yeah, please. I get this on email. I, I get I it. I ask you every week. You know, it, it's, it well, is within surely a week. By I have, now, to, I we have to wonder. I have to wonder why I have not, why have I not received this stuff? I'm going to send an email right now. Yeah, would you? I'm gonna, I'll tell you what. I'll do a commercial. You send an email. Because I inquiring minds, we got to know. Oh, it's just driving me crazy. Yeah, this is the one final big question. Uh, just for those who are not who you know haven't been listening to our every word over the last six months. And, and really, why wouldn't you? What's wrong with you, yeah, people? Come on. But uh, okay, maybe you've chosen you know inattention over attention. But if you have, then you <laughs> then what what we're talking about is the 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 ultimate question, which is if you buy the upgrade version of Windows Seven, you're using a Vista machine. Mm -hmm. Can you do a clean install, or do you have to leave Vista on there to validate your ownership of it and install Windows 7 on top of it, which everyone agrees is a fugly way to do it? Right. Inquiring minds want to know. Inqu and Microsoft has yet to say. I'm going to have to bring a second laptop with me to the launch just so I can Yeah, do it. We'll bring a Vista laptop. You know? And say, I want to do a clean install. Yeah, how does this work? You know, I could answer that question, except that this is a full version, I think. It won't work. Oh, man, why did they send me an upgrade? I could have tried it. I don't 
You know, it's just a bit. It's probably the same darn thing on the disc, right? It's just a bit somewhere. We won't know until we see it. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I can't say. It's I don't know. It's got to be some mystery. Know. You and I, 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 let's, I know. this is I know. interesting because we have in our hands the release version. This is not, not yeah. RTM. This is not Goldmaster. This is it. Yep. How have I, you know, I kind of, that's, that's, that escaped me. I should have installed this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I should have installed this. Have you installed it? Yeah, uh, off that, that version. That version. That's no, the, no, I'm going to give that away. You feel confident that the version, the RTM that you're using is the final build. Sure. But you don't know that. Nothing in life is certain, Leo. You just have to kind of... <laughs> I love you, Paul. ...to trudge ahead. <laughs> He's the Zen master, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he yeah. is Paul Therott. Windows Ninja. Yeah. Let us mention our friends at audible.com before we get to his tip and software of the week. Audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E. Somebody said, I can't find that audio.com you were talking about. No, no, it's audible. As in, you know, I can hear it. Audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash windows. Why don't you try that? Just, you know, just to make sure you're spelling that correctly now, just go to your browser and type in, just to check, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash windows. Just see what happens. Well, you know, as long as you're there, why not sign up for the gold account? That'll give you a book a month, and the first one is free, so you've got absolutely nothing to lose. Cancel at any time. You owe absolutely nothing if you cancel in the first month. And your first book, you get to keep it. You don't have to give it back. You don't have to send the bits back for recycling. It's yours. Audible is a wonderful resource for anybody who, uh, who loves books. Sometimes, I think sometimes people say, oh, uh, a book, um, it's not a book if you're listening to it. No, no, no. In fact, to me, it's more of a book. It's a it's a real experience, especially with the readers that they use. Amazing, wonderful, talented folks who really bring these books to life. It's just like listening to a movie. Do you have a pick, Paul, this week? That's something you'd like. I to do. Do? I'm actually really excited about this one. I hope it's good. I I. Uh, uh, it's the, brand the new. The name of the author is familiar to me. Is it Ian yes. Coffer? Kofer? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but he is. Yeah, he's been around a while, and uh, so as cool. many of you may remember, I've recommended uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which was read by Stephen Fry, and also the second book in the five-part uh, Hitchhiker's trilogy, which is uh, the Restaurant at the End of the Universe, also read by Stephen Fry. Excellent, excellent audiobooks. Uh, certainly among the best ever um, that I've experienced. I agree. Well, but, they were originally radio plays. I think that's why. Yeah, and and maybe written, you know, to, for that purpose. Written certainly. for the year, yes. But he also has a wonderful way with language. That's what I love about it. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, um, Douglas Adams has passed on. So, I, I, I believe it is. I think it might have been. I don't know who <laughs> okayed this. Actually, I'm not sure of the story, but uh, they have commissioned a, a new sequel. Uh, to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so it's obviously not written by Douglas Adams. Uh, but I like the title. <laughs> yeah, and, and, right as you yeah as you would as Mac. I, it's it's called and another thing. <laughs> well, and by the way, so it's not read by Stephen Fry, but if you play a bit from it, you'll see it's uh, obviously a British person, and it's it's got a, it's got a nice. You know who uh, it is. If you no, listen to the so, radio plays, it's Arthur Dent from the original. Excellent. Okay, I was going to say, uh, yeah, he's Dudley very, Duff very... In the path. He's, he's got that style. Oh. Yes, he does. Listen, here's a little bit of Arthur Dent. Of I mean, Simon Expressway. Jones. So the remorseless Vogons were dispatched in a constructor fleet to remove the offending planet with gentle use of thermonuclear weapons. Two survivors managed to hitch a ride on a Vogon ship. Arthur Dent... A young English employee of now, a regional. I have radio. to say, uh, this is if you're listening, you're you're seeing what we were talking about. I mean, that it's yeah. just it's just. Oh, I, I love, love the it. you know I, I love readers. these books. I, I, I the books uh, you know the Douglas Adams books yeah, I guess get progressively less good, <laughs> unfortunately, over time. But uh, the first couple are certainly are excellent. Um, the the one sentence description of this series is beautiful, though it is an Englishman's continuing search through space and time for a decent cup of tea. <laughs> what a great description. Uh, I'm told that it was Douglas Adams' wife who said, yes, go ahead. I was wondering if that's yep, what it was. Yep. Uh, okay. the, the estate of uh, Douglas Adams approved this. 
Okay. And uh, I think it's going to be great, and I cannot wait. I'm with you on this. And another thing, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Book 6. But, you know, all five of the first books are also on there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know what I've read of uh, uh, Ian Colfer's. He wrote uh, the Artemis Fowl books, which I loved reading to my okay. kids. Have That's you ever right. read any of those to your son? No, but I am aware of them. Oh, and, uh, you have to. I will. Now I will. Um, they are, he, they're, they're very imaginative and funny and fun. And uh, they have all of those, too. And, you know, I think another great choice on Audible, the Artemis Fowl books. But that's, that's, yeah. that's who Ian Colfer is. And uh, I think you couldn't pick somebody with a, with a I did. I read choice. an interview with this author recently, and I don't remember where it was. And, and I obviously, I was interested that he had written a sequel. Yeah. yeah. Hitchhiker, but he's, a, he's a wonderful author. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he wrote all of, I think there's five or six Artemis Fowl books. So, uh, yeah, absolutely a great pick. And our pick of the week, ladies and gentlemen. So all you got to do to get this for free is go to audible.com slash windows. That's our special Windows Weekly URL for listeners to this show, audible.com slash windows. You'll be signing up for that gold account. Now, I have to say, I, I think you too, Paul, are plat you and I are both platinum two-book-a-monthers. Are you? No. No, you're no. one book a month. Okay. Yeah. You see, I'm a glutton. <laughs> I need more. I love it. Um, and another thing, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You see, I'm down to no credits, but I'll get two more in a, in a couple of in a couple of days. I'm trying to convince my library to offer audiobooks. You know what's? Uh, you know, some do. Some um, do, and it's just it, the the problem is when you get used to Audible with sixty thousand choices, yeah. and you go to the library and they got ten. That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little depressing. Uh, but if they have what you want, that's fantastic. And another thing, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Book 6. Go to audible.com slash windows. We thank him so much for the support of Windows Weekly. 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 <laughs> and now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Paul will give us his tip of the week. 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 Why do you, why do you say it like that? <laughs> say it like uh, what? Say it like what? <laughs> exactly. Week. So... It's a, what was it? It was Cool Whip. Whip. All right. Cool Whip. Did you say whip? Whip. whip. Why do you say it like that? <laughs> say it like what? I say whip. Say I, wheat. 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 Say whip. Wheat. Whip. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, I, I started work on a series last year on the site called um, Digital Medial D digital medial, yeah. It's called digital medial. Why do you medial. say it like that? I don't know. Because I can't <laughs> speak. I'm really tired. <laughs> so, actually, it was called Digital Media Core. And I just wanted to uh, set out some basic recommendations about different things uh, with regards to digital media. And, of course, a year later, you know, things have changed, and I'm looking at revising that. And one of the things I have to say uh, that's really interesting about Windows 7 is that once you've made the move to Windows 7, uh, you can sort of expand your horizons a bit when it comes to audio and video formats. So a year ago, when it came to examining the available audio formats, uh, MP3 was sort of the overwhelming choice, as it has been, you know, for so many years. But now that Windows 7 supports AAC natively, uh, you know, there's almost no reason not to go with AAC, both for your own uh, CD rips and also for music that you purchase. So if you buy music on iTunes, for example, it comes in a very high-quality AAC format. That music works just fine in Windows Media Player See, on Windows 7. That's great news because I have yeah, a ton of Yeah, it works fine AAC in Windows stuff. Media Center. And it works on the Zune, by the way, as well. Oh, that's so, so great. Uh, and those are the big platforms, I think, that uh, are important uh, on Windows. And uh, once it works across all those, there's no reason to look back. Now, the other thing uh, on the video side was that last year, it tentatively figured that H.264 uh, was the future. And I would say that's been cemented uh, even more positively now a year later. And, like AAC, uh, supported natively in Windows 7. So I've been... Uh, I rip a lot of my DVDs in H.264. And in the past, you would have to run software like uh, QuickTime, or you could run them in iTunes or whatever. Um, but now natively in Windows 7, they work fine in Windows Media Player, and they work in Windows Media Center. So... Uh, as long as you're moving along to the next platform, you know, if you, if you still have some PCs on Windows XP or Vista, it may be a little bit of a, uh, a little early to switch. But if you, if you are moving along to Windows 7, uh, this is absolutely the time to reevaluate, you know, what formats you're using for, uh, for your music and, and video. And th this kind of came out of some questions I got. I think I mentioned it, it was probably two or three weeks ago on the podcast that I had ripped the, the, the Beatles CDs. You know, to the to hard drive, and people were asking me, "Well, what did you use?" And 
what format did you use? And I actually played around with that a little bit, but I ultimately used uh, iTunes to do it, and I ripped them to uh, AAC format. In fact, I think it's called, I think it's just called, they have a, a preset format called AAC Plus, or uh, it's the format they, they use for the, the music on the store. That's, so yeah, they, all that means is it's uh, unencrypted. Yeah. It's unencrypted, but it's also a certain bit rate. So it's uh, 256K. Oh, that's high. I didn't realize it was that high. Variable bit rate. Wow. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's going to sound be, that's good. You know, pretty it's good. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. All right. I that's think the so, case, you've made the case for AC. I'm very happy to hear that because it really was kind of a problem. Um, you know, I was ripping everything as MP3, but I know it's not as good as either WMA or AAC. But it's the, you know, kind of the lowest common denominator. You're guaranteed to have it play on everything. Yeah, that's always been the thing with MP3. You know, you, you know it will work on everything. Right. 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 Obviously, if you're walking around with a Rio Carbon from 19, you know, for <laughs> 2002, you know, AAC may not be the way to go. But, yeah. Also, you might want to get one of those wide ties, too. <laughs> yeah, the 8-track player yeah. and the yeah. you know, 76 compare you probably. Century. Yeah. All right. And finally... Your software of the week. Yeah, this is called uh, Display Fusion. As I mentioned earlier, I'm experimenting with multi monitor here, and I'm trying to deal with it. There, are, there is still some weirdisms with it in in Windows Seven. I have to say. Really, that's too um, bad because I really think yeah. that's the future for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and and actually, some of it is around the Zune software stuff. You know, if if you push the Zune software off to the other monitor, uh, and you do things like uh, minimize and bring it back, and it, it's just, it's it's strange. It, um, yeah. Still trying to get through all that, but you know, one of the very basic issues you see, and it's, it's still, I'm still kind of amazed that this isn't better in Windows 7, is that uh, you know, as you apply wallpaper, I mean, how nice would it be to do things like have a different wallpaper on each uh, screen, or if you have some sort of um, panorama photograph, you know, have it stretch between the screens, and you actually cannot do that natively in Windows. I'm amazed by that. So there is a utility called Display Fusion. Uh, that is a multi-monitor enhancement for Windows. It works on XP, Windows 7, it works on uh, Vista. And there's a free version that has some basic functionality, including really what I'm looking for is just some basic ways to get, uh, you know, a different image on each screen or uh, stretch an image across uh, both screens. Uh, there's also a paid version that has additional functionality. But it does that thing uh, that you want, you know, which is, uh, it's, it seems to me a very basic bit of functionality, but maybe Microsoft feels that... Um, Multi-monitor is just not that common, I'm not sure. It's funny because, geez, you know, I remember on the screensavers in 2002 or three, sure. spending a lot of time talking about how to use multiple monitors. Way back when, I mean, those were CRTs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah. it's something hey, we listen, wanted Hey, listen, I've actually time. done this. So in early days, I would say, I don't know if this was the first couple of versions of Visual Studio or pre-Visual Studio. Oh, God, this might have been Microsoft Assembler. Well, there was a way that you could... I, you could actually have a text screen on one screen and the GUI on the other, and you could actually use the text like an amber text screen Ooh, to do coding. That's like this a, might be before. Uh, this might be a, masm. That's a, that's a masm spasm, right? It there. might be masm. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. <sighs> I just had. A so shit. I've been trying. I've been trying ever since then, you know, to make it work. <laughs> Someday masm will work. Well, not no, not Masm. I can uh, have a thirty-inch display. <laughs> I, unlike Steve Gibson, I have in fact moved past Masm, uh, but <laughs> he I, still uses it. I, I hope he does. He still uh, uses Masm. Masm six point one. You know, the yeah. I can't believe you used Masm. I'm impressed. You're, you're deeper than I, I used thought. it. I used it poorly. Well, I, anybody, but, if you're using assembly language, it doesn't. There's no poorly. You're, you know, you're a stud. <laughs> well, I'm a, you know, that's your, I'm a your, your, wannabe, I think. You're programming into the bare metal, maybe. I mean, that's, you know. Sure. Sure. Wow. I mean. Yeah, uh, I can't get my website to look right, you know, so. <laughs> it's good stuff. We had a guy on uh, the open source show. I'm not going to name names. Mm -hmm. But I went, to his, name? <laughs> I went to his site. <laughs> it was the god-awfulest site I ever saw. And he, and he says, I do CSS and HTML. And it's like. Really? <laughs> I've never seen such an ugly site since 1989. Right, right. Oh, my God. Maybe it's on purpose. Oh, that's it. It's a kind of a... He's shooting for that 1996 Netscape 3 kind of look it. and feel, He's you know, gray it. All it was missing backgrounds is the and... animated GIF with the mailbox opening and going... Yeah. You know, remember, I could be wrong about this, but I think one of the primary advantages of IE3 over Netscape was that IE3 would render 
backgrounds in white instead of gray by oh, default if you didn't was specify. Hideous. How could yeah. we? How could we? You're right. I remember that. I think, I think that gray yeah. was so hideous. I don't know what that what was all about. What were they thinking? Black text on a... It wasn't a light gray. It was a dark gray No, it was kind of a medium gray. gray. It was awful. Yeah. Oh, well. We've come a long way, baby. <laughs> Have we? No. Yeah, we've come all the way to you shouldn't use Windows when you're doing <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's good stuff. Oh, we made some progress. Yes. Paul Therott, always a pleasure. I'm glad to have you back. You and I have to, you know, we need sit to down with our calendars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Y you tell me what you want to do. Do you want to work? Now, we're going to do 11 well, o'clock. We're going to do it either way. So I'm maybe... having a party, and we're our Windows party is that is going to be. When is your party? Uh, it's October 22nd, the launch yeah, day. When, what, what day? I, I was going to do uh, it during time? Windows Weekly time, 11 a.m. Now, that's Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 so... UTC. But it doesn't. you don't have to be here. I see. Well, we could just have cocktails. We'll do an yeah, activity yeah, yeah. or two. Uh, play cards. Uh, I need Apparently. to figure it out because that day is going to be busy. And I actually, I think I might have to record a webinar for work uh, that day, which is going to be horrible. Well, let's uh, maybe do it. I wonder if it's possible to do it later, even at, you know, maybe nighttime, my time. Yeah. Uh, might be better. Or the day possible. before. Of course. But, or the day or the before. Day before. Uh, the day before would be good. All right. We'll, we'll, come, we'll coordinate. Okay. And if, if you like to watch live, you know, if you go to live.twit.tv, there is a calendar, a Google calendar. You just click the view calendar, and that's always kept up to date. That's so your schedule. That's, the, that's really the programming schedule. So if you go there, the live programming schedule. So yep. if you go there, uh, you'll note, just check it next in a couple of days, uh, and by then we'll okay. figure it out. Yeah, we need to figure out a, a, yeah. what we're going to do yeah. here. Yeah, we will. Okay. So we'll, do it. we'll do something, and we'll do it either way. Great to talk to you. You too. Thank you for putting up with my wandering off. And we'll see you next week for the <laughs> Windows 7 launch <laughs> on Windows Weekly. I'm going to have to change the music, you know, so it's to start up. Oh, right, right, right.